Hi, um, my name is Samantha, and it's been about a year since I first went through the Thrive program. Um, it was kind of a long journey getting there. I had panic attacks for about 18 years. Um, I actually just turned 29 two weeks ago, so from the time I was 10 on, I was severely emetophobic. Um, when I was younger and I started having these panic attacks, a lot of times it would be because a kid in my class was sick or looked sick or something to that extent. And I would feel this terrible like, tightness in my chest, like I couldn't breathe. And you know, the stages of a panic attack, your heart races and you're sure you're gonna die. So as a little kid, that was, that was obviously very scary. Um, for the first couple of years, they actually ran a lot of tests on my heart, thinking I may have a heart murmur or some sort of issue, a birth defect that I may have been born with and they, they might have just missed um, because I would always talk about chest pains. It wasn't until one day I um, explained to my mom the emotional part of the feeling as well that she kind of realized, hey, you know, my 10-year-old's my having panic attacks. Um, and it was weird. It was it was really weird to be that young and um, have to talk to people about things like panic attacks. And I went to doctor after doctor, and it took me a really long time to attach the word emetophobia to it. Once I was able to really verbalize what it was that scared me, um, I think I was maybe 12. Like I always knew that that's what it was, but I never really had the words to go with it. And so it was about seventh grade, and I found it. I found, you know, the term emetophobia, and I started reading about it. And I thought, no way. Like, this is just crazy. There are people who, who understand this. There are people who are so scared to get sick they would do anything to avoid it. There are people who won't, won't eat and who will stay up. And, at, you know, in the middle of the night, if you don't feel well, you wake up. And, and there are people who are going to these great lengths. Like, they get it. They understand. And I, I knew that the fear was unreasonable. Um, I always knew, like, it's not going to kill me. It's never going to kill me. You know, I'll be sick for a little while, I'll feel better. But it didn't make any sort of difference in that moment. Um, I missed a lot of school. I missed a lot of school. Because if it wasn't a panic attack, it was this constant anxiety. It just it never let up. Always kind of going through how does my body feel? Why does it feel that way? Did I eat something? Was somebody that I knew sick? And it was really never ending. And I went to a lot of doctors. I, I did um, NLP therapy. I did cognitive behavioral. I did exposure therapy. I did um, EMDR, which is a type of, of hypnotherapy. I did hypnotherapy. Um, I actually, I think I was 17, 16 or 17. I went to Johns Hopkins University in, in Baltimore, Maryland, which is supposed to be one of the top universities um, in the country, or medical universities, I guess. And the doctor saw me for 15 minutes, uh, prescribed me Ativan, or Ativant, I believe, um, which is just, just a sedative. I slept for 19 hours. No doctor that I talked to really knew about emetophobia. They all kind of looked at me like, oh, well, okay, you're scared of getting sick. And I have to explain to them, no, I'm not scared of getting a cold. I'm not scared of a sore throat. I am petrified to vomit. And I, I knew it was bad when I, I had the conversation with my boyfriend at the time, now husband, that if I had cancer, my, my grandfather just gotten diagnosed. I said, I, I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't do the chemotherapy. I would rather die than spend the last part of my life living my biggest fear every day. Um, fast forward, you know, I'm, I'm married, I got married in a private ceremony. We didn't have any wedding guests there because I was afraid I'd pass out or have a panic attack or, or feel nauseous and throw up and, and it, it dominated my life. Um, I was never able to hold a job, I was never able to sit in a classroom. And it was terrible. It was 
it was the worst thing that I could I could have ever imagined living through. When you're emetophobic, it's it's different than other phobias. Not to say, oh well, this is more severe. Um, it's not more severe. It's just different. When you're afraid of snakes, you can avoid a wood pile and not go in the woods. You're afraid of heights, you just don't go into high places. But emetophobia is in you. Yeah, you're scared of how your own body is digesting or reacting to something you ate or it just feels off. And that's okay. But but when you're metaphobic it's not. It's it's not and in the last year that I've been well, it's always been strange to me now to have indigestion because before it wasn't indigestion, it was a panic attack. And I never felt the difference between nausea or indigestion or heartburn or any of that stuff. But I I get ahead of myself. Um my wedding, like I said, was was a private ceremony. Um, my husband and I would go get ready for a date and we'd have to turn around. We, we couldn't make it to dinner because I'd start having a panic attack. And it was the conversation that I had with him about if I had cancer, I, I went to chemotherapy that I realized I've got to get this under control. I have to do something. So I went back to another doctor um, that was local to my area that worked in phobias and he had never even heard of emetophobia and it was so disheartening. I thought there has to be something. I finally found uh, Boston University in Massachusetts, Boston, Massachusetts, for those of you who are not uh, in the U.S. It's a, it's a very, very prestigious university and they do have a program specifically for emetophobia, which was the only one that I found. Um, through a legitimate medical facility uh, in the U.S. It was going to be about $6,000 out of pocket and it was one week, one full week of exposure therapy. And they had a 70 something percent success rate and I thought if I can just get better, just a little bit better to where this isn't every day, then you know that week of hell will be worth it. And as I'm looking, I was searching for testimonials on the program, and I actually ran across a testimonial for Thrive instead. I, it was Mary, and she was 81 at the time. And I sat there and I listened to her talk about how she had cancer and she didn't do chemotherapy because she, she couldn't risk getting sick. How she never had kids, but it was a morning sickness, and kids are sick all the time and how she thought she would never have peace before she died. And I was sure that I was watching my 80 year old self. So I, I looked into the Thrive Program. The book was $30 and I thought, well, it can't hurt to try this. You've tried everything else. It, it can't hurt to try this before you go to Boston. It's 30 bucks, just try it. So I, I bought the book and I started doing um, sessions with Andrew Park Lawson from Scotland. He was wonderful. And it was the first chapter of the book and talking about how it's something I have to change. I was like, yes, thank you. Because I said to so many doctors, I know that I've taught myself that a rumbly stomach means a panic attack or this equals that and it's not right and I need to unlearn it but I don't know how. So the book just clicked and after 18 years I'm not a metaphobic anymore. I am a functioning person and it is something that you have to work on every day. It's not just oh I'm gonna read this book and I'm gonna be fine. I mean, you, you spend years conditioning yourself. You have to put in effort to, to retrain how you think. And it's not always easy. I mean, I still have days that my old habits will just kind of come back and it seems like out of nowhere. But now, I have the tools to fix it. I have the tools to be like, listen, that's not right. You know that's not right. You know that's not the truth. Go read your book. Go do your positives do your marbles, read the chapter on perfection, 
and know that you'll be fine. And now I am starting my life over at 29. And that's really hard because nobody really wants to give you a, a, a real chance when you haven't ever been able to hold a job and you can't blame them. But I've, I've had this opportunity to work in the Thrive Program and I'm hoping I will have an opportunity to work with the Thrive Program. Now, I want to help the people who felt hopeless, you know, the people who were like me, the people who didn't want to live because what was the point? What was the point in living in fear, being in bed on a diet of saltine crackers and tums just in case she threw up? I mean, there wasn't one. 18 years is a long time for anybody. But when it's more than half your life, it is. It's daunting. And to have somebody like Andrew, like like Rob, hand you this book and say, you have to do this. But if you do it, if you if you do that persistent, persistent effort, and, and you keep doing this. Your life isn't going to be like that. You can be that person that you've always felt you are. You can be that girl that has a happy marriage and is a mom one day and can go out to dinner. And, and when those things start to become common, when you start to go to dinner without thinking about it, when you order a burger without inspecting it to make sure that it was cooked at least to what appears to be exactly the right way that it should be. And every time your stomach gurgles, you don't freak out when you think, I could be a mom. That effort is, is worth it. There's nothing better. And I would encourage anybody, panic attacks, anxiety, any phobia, not just emetophobia, to really try the program and give it a shot because at most, it's 30 bucks. That book is $30, and it changed my life. I never, I never thought I'd have it back. I never thought that I would be okay. I thought my life was going to be anxiety and panic attacks until the day I died. But it's not. It's a really wonderful life with a great husband and two adorable fluffy dogs and one day kids and a career, a career helping people that I would have never had the opportunity if I didn't just try. Try it, pick it up, get a Thrive Consultant to help walk you through it and encourage you and put forth the effort because being able to live and to really live free and to do the things that you want to do and love your life instead of spending all that time in, in dread and fear. It is so worth it. It is worth every bit of it. And I, I really, really hope that there are people out there who will trust me enough to just, just take that chance. Because you deserve that. A fear does not get to or deserve to control you or your life does not get to mandate how much love and happiness and fun you can have because you can you can take control of it and you can fix it because you are that strong. So it's really an understatement to say that it's helped me. It has absolutely um, changed my life and I am grateful to Rob and his consultants for giving me the tools that I need to um, to be happy and to be healthy. So, thank you guys.